opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Outdoors People, with me, C.W. Getz, and her, Maya Marzaki. Good evening. It's Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. We have got, I always wanted to say it like this, in the downtown Windy City, we've got 38 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's three degrees Celsius, kids. And, you know, how's your, you know, like for the morning commute, people would do that <laughs> on the radio. Uh, I never, fortunately, or unfortunately, I never made it there, but uh, I always wanted to do that. But yes, 38. And by the way, Ooh. we have snow today. Um, it, it's really kind of a little freak of nature sort of thing. And it's not like it's never happened before. There's been blizzards <laughs> here in, in uh, April, but. Like you said before the show, uh, you were here, what, a couple times? Yeah. Uh, didn't snow almost all winter, except for January when I was in Brazil, which was beautiful. Um, and then now it's supposed to be spring and we have snow. I, I don't, somebody's confused somewhere, but yeah. 38, yeah. 30, three Celsius. What are you going to do with that, man? Yes, the same here. The season doesn't want to change. So we're supposed to be chiller because the, um, Fall just started, but it is hot again. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, it America. is summer again. I don't know what's going on with the weather in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. It's just called, it's falling apart at the seams, man. Everything. <laughs> the train yeah. is off the tracks and we don't know where it's going. How would Bob, how would Bob uh, Ross say that? We don't know where it's going and I don't know if we really care. <laughs> Remember, he would say that. <laughs> I don't know. That no, really I don't care. remember. That's funny. I love it. I love <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, all righty. Let's see here. Uh, well, let's get on. Let's meet our guest here this evening. 24 year old Iranian female wrestler, painter, and soon to be published author of poetry, Malika Bilali, along with her husband, immigrated from Iran to Scotland. She's now wrestling in Scotland as well as teaching wrestling there. Malika plans to qualify for the 2028 Olympic Games in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the show, Malika. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I was very excited watching the video. Uh, I think you captured both sides of me, yeah, wrestling yeah. and paintings. And thank you so much for uh, the good work that you did. I'm thank glad you. to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear mm -hmm. that. We, you know, and, and the thing is, I it was a surprise because you hadn't seen that before we aired it there. So, you know, that was something we just put together. Oh. Your, yeah. Without your oh my gosh. <laughs> it's such a cute surprise. video. Oh my gosh, like the coolest video. And I were going to be the coolest person we are going to interview. And I'm dying for that interview. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here with us. I don't That's want to be so a spoiler nice. on this, but I got to tell you, uh, Maya, I really believe we're going to see her on television. And I can't spill any more than that because it'll ruin part of this interview. So I, I'm just going to leave it at that. So there you go. Yeah, we are lucky because we, we could talk to her before she became so famous. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So you guys are going to see her on television soon. That's it. That's it. <laughs> A couple That's gold medals so around cool. her neck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank right? you so oh much. My gosh. I should <laughs> practice a lot to win the medal. <laughs> I'm I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just describe life in Iron for a woman. 
as a woman, you face lots of discrimination living in Iran, and uh, most of them caused and by government regulation, and some of them are because of the uh, societal norms and traditions that's you know related to your family and to your uh, you know the uh, education system that's created by the government but all of them hand in hand from education to employment mm -hmm. to the society you face lots of discrimination and uh, I think as a woman, you face lots of hardship, but as a good part, women stay hand in hand to face discrim this discrimination and fight with it and find a new way to create their own freedom as a new revolution of woman life freedom that is uh, started by the death of Massa Amini. Wow. Well, yeah. So let me ask you this. If if it's OK, just being a woman in Iran, what is it like being a female wrestler in Iran? That so, has a whole uh, other element to it. Yeah. So a uh, wrestling uh, specifically is a national sport in Iran and it's a male dominated sport. So yeah. Yeah. traditionally, Iranian, when they born, they start learning wrestle while they are kids so if the family gathering uh, they start playing with our with their kids and make a very small do, do we lost her or is my computer matches and cheer up boys and they wrestling together but as a girl you are just watching you you cannot uh join these fights so you cannot join this passion but uh for me it was the same i just watch but since uh, March uh, 2015, uh, a sort of a wrestling started in Iran with hijab. Uh, so this means a male-dominated sport a start for a woman with a hijab, and this means they need uh, they can engage in this sport, which is only for men, but they need to respect their religion closing the religious hijab yeah yeah and this is that uh, even though with the hijab all the uh, sport female uh, athlete uh, okay uh, all the female athlete facing discrimination lack of support and also uh, they are representing uh, half of population of iran that facing discrimination and uh, but I'm proud of them, even though with the discrimination in their family and education system and society, they step up and shout their voice out. Yeah. Well, that's that's unreal. Um, I mean, uh, Brazil, it is a sexist country. It is very man dominated and uh, we have many crimes against women. But in theory, in law, we have the same rights, but mm -hmm. actually. And it is very hard to live here. So I cannot even imagine how is living in Iran being a, a woman. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's unreal. And it is very, it's very nice that you are here and uh, expressing you and uh, we are going to talk more about you, but it is nice everything that you have done. Uh, but uh, in a in one point, you and your husband choose to immigrate to Scotland, and uh, how that was uh, for both of you? How was the experience for both of you? So facing freedom and also adapting ourselves to the cultural change, it was quite a challenge. So I came as a partner with my husband. Uh, my husband got a fellowship for the University of Edinburgh in the IASH uh, Institute. And also he got a fellowship from APF based in the US. And I was lucky uh, to come to Scotland because I first started wrestling in a normal way wearing single legs and uh, be equal with men and training with them in Scotland. 
and also I had the support of the you know government and also the university all of them were open to me uh, provide the education opportunity for me also uh, as an Iranian woman when I came here I removed my hijab and it was very hard for me to adapt myself uh, my uh, my self esteem and also confidence was lower than a you know first world country's woman and I tried to adapt myself and build up my language first and then catching up in you know my sports world and also my art and try to see myself as a free woman but i think this process of uh, this process of uh, this process for me to change and adapt was so much yeah so uh it was quite a you know a uh, daunting process for me. Do you ever stop? Oh, yeah. Do you ever just stop and say, "Oh my gosh, I just can't believe how different this is, and where I'm at, how far I've made it, and how far I've gone," and and just kind of reflect on your life. Sometimes you, you just kind of catch up with yourself. You ever do that? Actually, my husband doing it. So uh, he sometimes come and say to himself that. Uh, I inspired by my past because he had very tragic past. This is his uh, story, but uh, I learned from him that uh, sometimes when I see my past, I get inspired and become motivated to move forward faster and faster, like a sprinter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a really good lesson for everyone who who is listening. Uh, you needed to change your whole mindset, your a way of seeing and facing life to experience something different, but in the same way, something better for you as, as a woman in a Europe country, in a, a free country for, for women in general. So it's very brave of you because even though it was a good change, it was a big change. So it's very brave of you. And talking about how brave you are, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as I understand, you will be competing uh, to qualify for the 2028 female freestyle wrestling team. Is that correct? Uh, yes, this is my ambition. Uh, this is my aim. So for, a, for a, all athletes, they wish to be Olympic athletes, so they wish to get the gold medal, but being an Olympic athlete is here, but I need to work so hard for it. And Olympic is not a gift. You need to earn it. Each step of it needs blood and sweat. And I'm willing to pay that price. And I'm, because I don't want to become a champion with a medal. I want to become a wrestler by its means. Uh, I always saw my father and all men doing wrestling in TV, in YouTube, and I saw the picture of a wrestler, but I didn't know what is behind in the weighing room, in the wrestling room, what they are doing. And I love the process. Uh, <laughs> even after I got injured, I had an injury. And after that, it was very hard for me to back up. And I also start learning a new sport beside of wrestling. And by doing all those things, I think I'm getting step by step closer to where I want to go. But I don't want to reach that goal and see uh, nothing after that. I, I want to enjoy the process of building my skill as an Olympic athlete. So uh, my ambition is to become qualified for 2028 Olympic in Los Angeles. And uh, it's a long way, but I'm sure my, um, my will, my, because I, I wasn't able to wrestle. I, it was a banned sport for me. I, I value the mat room, the wrestling room more than other girls because they had this 
uh, met and you know they were uh, wrestling was available for them but it was a band sport for me and i i think i i see it with my blood and flesh the warmth of it yeah <laughs> Yes, I, I can uh, speak for myself. We take for granted the freedom that we have and we don't know how important it is and how much women needed and still fighting for that. So that's yes. very inspiring and very nice of you. Now you are living your dream, the things you always dreaming about. Now it's real. You are building that. Yeah. I feel I almost feel guilty for being a male right now. <laughs> <I just laughs> yes, you should. I should. Uh, why should we I mean, I'm not in charge. Discrimination is for men too in Iran, <laughs> so it's not only for a uh, woman. Uh, it's for men too. So both gender facing discrimination, but women face worse, way worse than men. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you about your. I'm going to shift gears and ask you about your paintings, but first I'm going to ask you this. Were what, what kind of kid were you? Were you, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, there's this mm -hmm. wrestler in the back of your mind when you're a kid. And I'm wondering, did you just go out there and kick, you know, kick ass in the playground and, with, you know, with the boys and uh, or maybe with the, I don't know, they'd play a recess or how, what, what, what kind of kid were you? So you cannot imagine. I was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I, I can, but yeah. <laughs> I was kind of kids that cry very fast and also was very uh, fast to broke. Uh, so I was very shy and I also was very, you know, a uh, childish kid. So I was, wow. you know, always, uh, you know, be aside and don't talk with the people. Just just painting, just reading, uh, you know, books like uh, mostly literature, and um, Shahnameh was my favorite, the uh, the Iranian book, and uh, also. But after I start doing wrestling, my personality changed, oh, so my wow. reality changed. So <laughs> there you go. I, <laughs> and I you become... start flipping on the boys, at the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. But I think um, before wrestling, I didn't have my own creation in uh, painting and also poetry. But I think wrestling gave me this courage to uh, speak up for myself first, uh, give me this confidence. And beside of it, I start creating my own art. And yeah. yeah. You know, Malika, I know another another lady just like that. She's on the other end of this uh, broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> But hers was climbing, am I right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I was very uh, shy girl as well, and uh, climbing and mountaineering generally changing my life. So I really understand where you come from. <laughs> I love that. You <laughs> and, should just have that. It's cool. Yeah, right? And uh, it is very brave of you because uh, not it's not for everyone change mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. So I'm I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm very proud of you too. Uh, but I think uh, just my family uh, like me this way. So they always wanted me to be shy and don't speak for myself and be a side, uh, be a good girl, not a, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> a I, rebel. <laughs> I disappointed my parents uh, a little bit like that too when I started playing drums. I don't have to explain anymore. That, I don't think. Yeah, because you know it is easier to control a shiny kid <laughs> if he has no voice. But go. now you are that strong woman fighting and uh, fighting against everything in front of you to be yourself. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> good for you. But, good uh, for you. Uh, first yeah. that I came in Scotland, it was very hard for me to adapt myself, but I got inspiration from Iranian women. Most of them were in prison. Most of them were uh, attacked by acid uh, because they didn't cover their face. And uh, they start speaking by uh, for themselves, like Marzi Ibrahimi, and she had a TED talk. And I got inspired with them, uh, even though they were under discrimination, under pressure, uh, under every kind of 
uh, you know, a suppression, but they start speaking for themselves. So wow. I start going to the gym, working out, and I start planning for myself, uh, like how to develop my self-esteem because I feel like I didn't have any life before. I yeah. had, I start my life in Scotland. Wow. Wow. Man, you know, that's, yeah, such a cool, you know, <laughs> by the way, I have to say this. We need to thank our mutual friend, Clarissa Jacobson, for having just arranging this to have you on the show because Clarissa said you have one heck of a story, and she was she was right, absolutely right, spot on. Um, but I'm, she's I'm, an angel. I love her. <laughs> she is. I hope she's listening right now. Um, <laughs> but but uh, I'm going to shift gears here just for a, a bit. Um, Malika, what was your, what is your inspiration behind your paintings? I want to ask you that. Oh, did you hear us? Did you catch it? Is she with us? Uh, yes, I'm here there you with are. you. Okay. So. Yeah, what's, we just want to know, what's the inspiration behind your paintings? So as I said, I got inspiration for developing my confidence. Uh, while I was in Scotland, it was very hard for me to get inspired in, you know, Scottish weather. It was very gloomy, but it's, it is nice. The people are nicer than the weather. But um, I start, <laughs> you know, painting uh, Iranian women. Uh, first, um, you know, during COVID, I start developing my old painting skills. Uh, through YouTube, it was very effective. And when I came to Scotland, I started developing my bigger pictures. So I made a collection uh, for women of Iran uh, who start uh, speaking for themselves. Uh, after, uh, you know, Woman Life Revolution, I start naming this collection Woman Life Freedom. And uh, I also add some of the, you know, um, strong uh, girls and women who died in the protest, like Mahsa Amini, like Nika Sharkarami, like the picture on my back is uh, Armita Garavand uh, from Iran who died um, the same way as Mahsa Amini died. And this, is, this collection is like a tree. And I believe women have this power like a tree that uh, even though they have a wound in their body, in their heart, they have the power to grow a bud uh, in between the wound and, you know, make a heal. So the healing power is come from mothers, come from the earth, come from a woman. So this collection symbol come from this. And yes, and I write poems for each paintings, yeah, to describe how uh, I, you know, collect the symbols and put them together on a canvas. Well, well, that's that's very impressive. That that's uh, interesting that you can pick up everything that's wrong or everything that you don't like, and then uh, change that for make something better and make you stronger. Yeah. It's but sometimes uh, the world is so tricky. People change by the time. So yeah. at that time, I got inspired by these people. But through the time, they might change. But it doesn't mean I always ins get yeah. inspired by them. But at that age and that time, I got inspired by all of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part of the process that you talked about wrestling. So that's your painting process and you yes. are enjoying it <laughs> till <laughs> the end. <laughs> and you, we don't know when it, the end is going to be, right? And uh, talking about the inspiration, um, how it is the inspiration for your poetry? So as I said, um, I first my first poem was for... Uh, one of the mothers of uh, a, pr a prisoner who died in Iran. And I wrote that poem and sent it to her. And they wasn't able to read that. And they asked me to read it by my, by my voice because they wouldn't understand what this mean. And when I read it, they start saying, oh, it's a poem. And I find out that I have this talent that I can develop and study more about poetry. And 
uh, actually it was the same uh, way for my painting and uh, I developed both of them in 2021 uh, when I arrived in the uh, Scotland and uh, I start writing for each uh, painting a poem and I, while I was painting I start imagining what's the meaning behind what I'm painting and try to add it in my poetry so try to add it and uh, bring words um, on the paper and also adding those words into the picture so both of them was working hand in hand well, all those skills were sleeping inside of you and uh, you didn't know and now all of them woke up so you became a really like strong and rock star <laughs> yeah but i think um um i wasn't so lucky but i think i used the time effectively uh i lost lots of time i should say that <laughs> uh but um because i was uh in a you know a new country i didn't have so much friends i most of the time i go to the gym and come home and that's it and sometimes go with, out with my husband but that's it and i have so much time to develop and paint and work out and train two times a day and uh, my day become full of the you know paintings writing and you know exercise and just eating and sleep Malika, how has your family in Iran reacted to your decision uh, to become a female wrestler? I'm curious about that. Um, first, my family have a you know a strict mindset uh, about you know religion. They are they have they are very strong in their religious belief. And when I just immigrate. I share some pictures of myself without hijab, and my mother mostly disagree with the way that I was. She wanted me with a chador, even hijab, and then chador, the black scarf. And um, I didn't like this way. I wanted to adapt myself and discover the new me. I wanted mm -hmm. to find out who I would become if I was here. And even though right now, even though I find out, okay, I want to paint, I want to write, I want to wrestle, I still don't know who I was if I was born here. I might, you know, uh, become a, you know, a rider or uh, a horse rider. I want to discover that. For the first time, I start cycling here. And it was very, very a strange feeling for me because cycling is banned in Iran for women. Women of Iran cannot cycle. No. Yes, um, but my family didn't like me to wrestle. Uh, they even don't like me to be without hijab. And But when I start speaking up for myself and even though sharing uh, some uh, beliefs of like a feminism like a, uh i have a, my own rights and asking and shouting out for it uh they they didn't like this so they stopped contacting with me but i feel like uh we didn't choose uh where to born but uh this is my choice to who we come so i yes maybe my last name is not my choice but my uh, my path, my way is my choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty, you know, and honestly, I'm, I'm sure you're not the first child to disappoint her parents, but, uh, at the same time, and it's kind of a, that's a tough place to be. I'm sure it's like, you know, you, you, your, your, your parents want you to be one way and, and, you know, there's a religious beliefs are invo involved in that, but then you're like, Hey, I'm my own person and I have my own life. Um, it's gotta be a struggle for you. Right. Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that that is very good point. Uh, actually, uh, one of my painting is about Goldshifta Farahani, and she once says said that the only problem is that I'm a woman. If I was a man, I didn't have so much problem. And yeah. this is same for me. 
uh, all the problem is that I'm a woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I was a man, <laughs> there wasn't any problem. Yeah, same for that girl that I paint. Yeah, the problems and the solutions, <laughs> because mm -hmm. you find found re very nice solutions. <laughs> Here's what I want to know: What do you think they're going to say once you win gold medals? <laughs> the 20, 2028 Olympics. Are gonna stop. No, maybe we oh could. Maybe we were, yeah, we, we're yeah. a little too strict. I don't know. We'll yes. What do you think? Beside of my family and the government of Iran, and also there was lots of forces that wanted to stop me doing wrestling, but I want to say to them, I just did it. Um, <laughs> like, um, here I am. <laughs> I don't know which actor was that, but she, uh, she got the Oscar and say, look at me now. <laughs> I want to say that. Yeah, look at me now. Yeah. I think you'll be able to say that once you pull away all those gold medals that you're going to win. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, anyways, you you are now. You can say that now. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's great. Right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you are an advantage of almost all women I know from, mm -hmm. like, free countries you know yeah. who were born in countries like scotland like brazil like united states so you you won already yeah true <laughs> yeah you're right actually uh sometimes i say to myself when i got disappointed and facing lots of challenge in front of me uh actually olympic is not a gift for me i should fight for it but i feel like even though now even wearing the singlet, I represent Iranian women who like to uh, wrestle, but they cannot. Mm -hmm. So I'm fighting for each one of them, but mostly for myself. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I have lots of dream that has died, but I try to reborn each one of them. Oh, that's that's very beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And um, what lesson has experience try you that you would be willing to share with our audience this evening? Yeah, just, um, I would like to say, just be with the flow and let the wind, uh, you know, move you to the place that you want to go. Yeah, and don't fight with it destiny yeah i i didn't believe to the destiny but nowadays i believe that there is a destiny and i feel like if we um become uh you know loose with the flow uh it will be more enjoyable that's a great i like that I like that a lot thank you <laughs> <All> right <laughs> <That's> very good <laughs> Couldn't have said it, said it better myself. No, just joking. Right. Right. Honestly. <laughs> right. We are, learning, we are learning so much this evening. Absolutely. That's so cool. Me ah, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to learn even more about you with your pictures. And I need to say that's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I love it. <laughs> I, I said because of you, CW, because I know well, you are reading and I don't want to disappoint you. No, it's, it's cool. It's like show and tell at school, I always say. You know, this is, a, this is the little extra bonus part we do on our show here, right? Right. So, Juan, do you have the pictures? Here we go. Yeah, what are we looking at here, Malinka? Is she with us? Still with us? We're having some uh, internet oh. issues here, it looks like, tonight. You, you still with us, sir? This is female Oscar. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think the, here is the first place that I'm display, uh, that I'm showing this painting, yes. Very nice. Very cool. Oh. This is interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a yeah. lot going on here. <laughs> there's a lot oh. going on Wow. Oh, so, oh my gosh. Uh, they these crows uh, try to tie this tree, which represent the equality for women. And they trying to cut the tree. They don't like women have their, you know, their, their own rights. Yeah. 
Interesting. Now, okay. I'm now I'm yeah. seeing this a little different way. I like oh that. Oh my! Oh my gosh! That's that's so heavy. Like such yeah. a heavy feeling. <laughs> yeah, because because I know, like even even though here in Brazil that we have the same rights, trauma, it's it not happens, and uh, the society tries to shut us down every time. So every yeah. time I feel like that tree for sure. It's so just. It's that's wild how these things represent and you look at this picture you know it, i think it really does a lot for to have a little bit of an explanation on these things because i'm oh wow now mm -hmm. i'm seeing what's going you know really understanding this a lot better actually yeah. these paintings was uh from iran uh but i didn't like them so so much because the technique are very basic so they there isn't so much lighting in it but when I see that you like them, so I I become more proud of the work. So <laughs> you are just too humble because it is an amazing picture in uh, the technique, and I think how it is dark is how it should be because it is a dark feeling <laughs> being yeah. in the, that position and the feeling you want to to put on that, and you make me feel that so more than well done. Thank you. Yeah, very, very nice. There's a lot of detail in that picture. Yeah. So this oh. one is a mother that, you know, even though she dried, uh, her child is a, you know, fresh bud. I mean, a fresh, you know, green, a new tree that is going to grow, oh. uh, which means a mother uh, try to, you know, help their kids to grow up or they, you know, do anything for their kids to grow up. But definitely that kid is a boy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you, I mean, and I've, I've seen two trees now. Do you have a thing where like trees are, are, are a, a, something that you paint frequently or how does that work for you? Or, or maybe no, just a coincidence. So my father is a farmer. So I grew up in a farm in a you know world of trees and oh. in a jungle uh, so uh, i i feel like i i bond with the trees yeah, so yeah. I, this is a subject that i always like to paint even though when i uh, design a poster for my husband movie i tr i use trees most of the subject that i use is trees yeah that's cool i love it but in the same hand, I feel like it represents a uh, life. If you want to represent a woman in in the tree, like like that one, the next, the last one, I think tree and nature represent can represent uh, yeah. life and how to create life. Yeah. It's yes. a good association. I can yeah. See it. Yeah. Next one. There you go. Yeah. Oh These God. are a Scottish painting. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when I started doing judo, uh, there there was a light coming in my painting. So um, I have pro judo to tank uh, in the city center of Glasgow, uh, where the community is full of joy. And they brought you know, lots of light in my painting. So these are the most the the first paintings that I start to paint for Scotland. Yeah, I like that chiseled look that, that to the to this woman's face that you painted here. Um, that's 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 very cool. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and this one is my fair uh, my no not the first the first painting that I did I gifted to the University of Edinburgh and this is the second one. Uh, this is Nasrin Sutude, uh, and she she is a lawyer, and she is a speaker for the you know the woman and for the equality. And the government imprisoned her only because she speak up and you know defend the right of woman, the rights of a woman. And That's as you see, the crow is a bat, um, you know very uh dark side and the candle represent the right i love that everything means something i love that and you know something that's a beautiful beautiful painting that, yeah. that 
extremely beautiful. Wow. And you see the you know blue light on the back represent the you know uh, the prison, wow. which they um, imprison her. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's heavy. There's a lot going on in your paintings. I love this. There's very. This deep. one is my first painting ever painted. Really? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Are you making that up? Yeah. That, seriously, this is your first one. Oh yeah, this my is my gosh. first painting. Yeah. Wow. You are natural. I would you say. You were, were born with those talents. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you? How much like art lessons did you have? I mean, before you did this painting. Uh, so I study art. Uh, I didn't study a sport. So I study animation and filmmaking, and also uh, uh, in the university I study uh, theater literature. Wow. Yes. Because you are now okay, you're in your profession again is tell us again because I so I'm pro well, now you, still, you you cut out there, Malika. Let's try that again. We're, we're having some internet issues. Try that again. You yeah. cut out for a second. Start over there, please. So uh, recently because I represent uh Scotland only, not going for the any international matches, I don't earn, earn money from wrestling that much just for from my teaching. Mm -hmm. And but for my paintings, I sell paintings and uh sometimes painting people portraits. Uh but these paintings that are for women are uh, for showing in the exhibition and uh, speaking for the woman's right, uh, which I don't intend to sell mostly. Hmm. Uh, but uh, yes, and I have planned to publish my book. So yeah, oh. yeah okay. my poetry book, which contain lots of poems that I write after I uh, immigrate. And I see it in a way that I, you know, self trophy myself with the poetry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so this one is Marzi Ebrahimi, and she attacked by acid in her face. And she is speaking up for her right. And as you see, her face is, you know, covered and bandaged, uh, but there are very green buds that grew up from the wounds. And hmm. yeah. Well, very symbolistic. I love that. Yeah. Here's oh a there's a lot going on in this one here too. Wow. Yeah, the background I paint with my finger. Yeah, I didn't have so much material like a uh, brushes or something, but I had some oil paint and and I start painting at first the background with my finger. Yeah. Wait, you you finger painted this background? Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> You should have seen my finger paintings in school. <laughs> like this, man. this is, yeah, holy smokes! Actually, it's very good feeling, but you need to, uh, you need to make sure that wash your fingers very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it felt good. <laughs> it good when I did, you know? So yeah, <laughs> it's always fun getting messy, you know, but never never look <laughs> close to this. Yeah. I don't want to see my climber fingers <laughs> painting. <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. It's not going to look like so good like here. Sure. Yeah, same here. <laughs> same here. Okay, wait. Let's go. Back. I'm going to ask you what, what 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 are we looking at here? Let's go back to the other one. I'm sorry, Juan. Yeah, what what? Tell us what's going on here. Tell us what this represents. So this is a woman who is uh, young, and her body is young, but her hair is, you know white which means she become old inside oh. and she's you know burning in fire and she also cover her hair with a hijab and but uh, still she is dancing on fire um this means even though women of iran are struggling um you see a face of a heaven that they are he uh, you know happy but mm -hmm. uh, they are not they are in a fire and they are dancing with the fire and uh, this fire might you know cause their own their life or they might die or something but they uh, still keep growing and as you see there is a tree that is uh, going up with a blood color Mm -hmm. uh, which means they are fighting.
but there is a tree that's going down and burning, which means a, a tree might burn and die, a tree might go up uh, and grow up, even though with a blood color. Wow. Wow, that's very, very deep. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad I, I'm glad I asked, honestly. Right. All right, yeah. here we go. Uh, so this one is a womb, uh, but it's painted as a, a tree. Um, it's kind of a, like a walnut as well, but, uh, you know, a woman, uh, like a child, but, a, you know, a grown woman body wow. uh, is inside of it in a blood water. And it's going to die in the womb, uh, which means uh, when when a woman grow up in iran they died uh even oh. because they are a woman uh so uh when they go to sonography they first ask if it's a boy or a girl if it's a boy they are happy they're celebrating but if it's a girl they start saying oh that's a girl that's a shame <laughs> Yeah, they start mm. saying yes, uh, uh, so they that child in the uh, in the womb of a mother uh, starts, you know, feeling this, you know, negativity, and this negativity will, you know, uh, kill her, like uh, executing her in the womb of a mother. Wow, very deep. Oh, that's. That's so heavy and can <laughs> represent so many people and so many culture cultures and parents. Yeah, that's so heavy. Thank you very much for sharing your parts paintings with us. That's so nice. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I really enjoy talking about these painting and I haven't shown them. I just share them on Instagram, but I I never talk in detail about these painting oh well oh my gosh the, yeah i'm that, happy to provide you the opportunity to do that absolutely <laughs> right the world need to see and to listen to that so i'm Thank very you. glad that you had the time and uh talking about that where can people find you online so i'm very active on instagram i have two pages one of them is for my art one of them is dedicated to my you know activism and sport and uh yes yeah, so you can find me on facebook with if you search medica Blali. and yes and yeah, thank you so much <laughs> well malika hey we want to thank you uh thank you for being our guest here it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show and uh thank you again to clarissa jacobson for making all this possible so we really appreciate that clarissa yeah. yeah, thanks to Clarissa. She is very great help. Actually, she is a, a first was a friend of my husband, and after that, a good friend of me. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> yes, it is impossible not to be friend with her if you know her. It is yeah. impossible. Absolutely. She's such a, a good person, and that's why she became friends and know people like you. Because you know, yeah. good people attract. She's a very good people. writer <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah, she is. Yeah. Well, okay. and we want to thank our audience for tuning in to tonight's show. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode, Survival and Ocean Race, with our guest Liz Galloway. Along with Maya Marzaki, this is CW Getz saying thanks for tuning in to Outdoors People. See you next week. Ciao.